Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about an action fantasy film called The Great Yokai War. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Somewhere in the city of Tokyo, a horrible disaster has apparently occurred, and a boy named Tadashi is lying hopelessly on the streets. He looks into the sky and sees a golden scale flying towards him, eventually landing on the center of his chest and causing a bright light to appear. A magical creature known as the Chiling flies towards him, causing Tadashi to wake up from what appears to be a dream. The boy thinks nothing about his nightmare as he looks into the peaceful ocean, but what he doesn't realize is that something horrible is happening in the outer edges of the world. A vengeful demon known as Kato conjures a fireball into his hand before dropping the energy into a field of trash that are thrown away by human society. This causes a huge explosion that swallows the entire area with flames as the men begin summoning a massive creature from the collective hatred of being discarded. A large amount of energy launches out from inside the earth while surrounding the evil demon at the same time and eventually transforming into a massive machine. A mysterious woman known as Aji stands before the heart of the creature, which slowly comes to life as it fuses with the resentful energies. The girl presses down the final lever and causing all the gears to turn, as the power begins to run through the entire machine while Kato embraces the birth of his new creation. Later that night, a ceremony is being held inside the village that the main character lives in, as the actors pretend to be the magical Chi Ling who is here to choose a new savior. The boy's classmates make fun of him for being so afraid, but what the kids didn't expect was for the Chi Ling to choose Tadashi as the new writer, who's destined to save the world. All the people congratulate the main character for receiving such honor, as a mysterious reporter takes pictures of the boy repeatedly. What they don't realize is that the vengeful Kato has already started his plan, by ordering his minions to capture all the demons known as Yokai for building his new army. Luckily, one of the creatures was able to escape, but not before Aji strikes it right in the back and causing the yokai to fall down the stairs. The next day, while finishing his class, Tadashi is being teased by his classmates once again, telling him that he has to retrieve a legendary sword now that he's the chosen one. The boys tell him that he has to go to the mountains nearby, but they all think that the main character is too afraid to complete the mission. However, Tadashi refuses to be laughed at by his classmates anymore, and decides to proceed towards the mountaintop all by himself. He goes on to the road that leads him deeper into the forest, and quickly realizes that it's a terrible idea as he begins seeing dead animals and numerous gravestones. The boy begins hearing ghostly whispers telling him that there's no turning back, which causes him to scream in fear as he runs desperately away from the area. He manages to escape towards a small road, where he sees a bus driving towards him, and quickly rushes onto the vehicle without suspecting that anything is wrong. Very soon, Tadashi makes it into a tunnel where the surroundings quickly become pitch black, and a pair of claws appear right outside of his window, which turns out to be a demon. The boy notices more creatures appearing everywhere, eventually surrounding the entire bus, but suddenly disappears as the vehicle returns into daylight. Surprisingly, he notices a creature on the ground, which turns turns out to be the yokai who was able to escape the enemy's capture, and Tadashi notices that the animal is badly hurt. The boy decides to take the yokai home and bandages the creature's wounds, but is confused as to what exactly the animal is. Luckily, the demon appears to be quite intelligent, and is able to communicate with the main character by telling him that it's a demon cat. Meanwhile, the giant machine creature is hiding in the valley of the wilderness, and Aji has already captured numerous yokai for her army. The creatures demand to know why she's locking up her own people, which only prompts the woman to spit on the prisoners and nearly melting off the demon's face. A giant metallic monster known as the Kikai lands on the ground, revealing itself to be one of the numerous creations of Kato's army. The people watch in fear while the girl announces herself to be more than just a demon now, as she plans to fuse with Kato and turn into something much more powerful. The mechanical monster grabs 
onto one of the yokai and brings it towards the heart of the machine. The giant smelter opens up and the demon is dropped right into the abyss as he cries in despair. A discarded bike is lowered into the container while the yokai is slowly melting and the two begin to fuse together into something that's truly horrific. A machine monster is created by this union as it launches out from the giant factory, eventually landing inside the forest and arriving towards a small town. The creature begins transforming into a humanoid as it scans all the people nearby to find its prey. A woman walks into her living room and is shocked to see the monstrosity as it kills the human right away before charging towards the husband and shredding him into pieces. The next day, while having some ice cream alongside his new demon friend, Tadashi is approached by the reporter who was in the ceremony as well. It turns out that the man is very interested in yokai as he claims to have been saved by a demon when he was very little. All he can remember of his savior is the woman's beautiful appearance and the lovely thighs that he was resting on. The man has not been able to see any more demons ever since and he theorizes that this is because he's now a grown up, but the boy thinks that it's simply because he grew out from puberty. Later that night, Tadashi goes home to find that everyone is gone, leaving him nothing but a note from his grandpa that says that the old man has gone to the mountains all alone. Tadashi immediately begins seeing a vision of his grandfather having an accident and eventually drowning inside the ponds. This causes him to rush towards the mountains right away, and quickly arriving towards the same location that he ran away from the last time. The boy tries to call for the old man's name, but his flashlight begins malfunctioning functioning, causing the demon cat to shake in fear and eventually running away. Tadashi tries to look for his yokai friend, which leads him towards a pond that's likely to be harboring something very dangerous. Very soon, the boy slips into the water by accident, and is quickly grabbed onto by a hideous creature that tries to pull him into the pond. Luckily, Tadashi is able to break free as he runs towards the main roads immediately, but soon sees the back of a schoolgirl who surprisingly calls out his name. The boy tries to ask her for help, but soon realizes that the person in front of him is missing a face. He quickly falls back in fear and is teleported to a different location where a building has appeared right behind him. Tadashi rushes inside to seek shelter and quickly sees a sickly woman who's lying on the bed. When he tries to ask her for help, Help, the person's head flew off her body and causing the boy to scream in fear. The woman continues moving towards the main character, causing Tadashi to desperately run away, but he's eventually captured by the strange demon who pulls him towards the doors. Suddenly, the boy begins seeing the shadow of a catwoman, where numerous blinking eyes appear on the doors, causing Tadashi to stumble back immediately. The boy manages to break free from the woman's neck and rushes out from the building right away, only to see a giant face appearing right in front of him. The massive head begins blowing furiously towards the main character, causing him to fly away from the place and landing right back to where he started. The boy tries to run away, but begins hearing his grandfather crying for help once again, and after struggling intensely, Tadashi finally conjures up enough courage to help his family. However, the boy quickly runs into a red demon who congratulates the main character for passing the test. This fills the boy with confusion and fear, causing him to stumble towards a cliff and fall down towards the river below. Luckily, Tadashi is eventually saved by a woman from inside the water, who managed to carry him towards the surface. The boy wakes up and sees the face of a beautiful girl, while noticing the lovely thighs that the reporter has talked about, but is quickly frightened by the creature standing behind her. Tadashi has trouble believing the existence of all the yokai, but eventually notices the demon cat was apparently still alive, which manages to comfort him back to sanity. The red demon tells the boy that he's the new chilling rider, which means that he has to retrieve the legendary sword to save the entire world. The yokai assures Tadashi that his grandfather is safe, as the demon was the one impersonating the old man's voice, which tricked the boy into coming here. They travel deeper into the mountains and eventually arriving inside a massive cave, where a giant statue of a demon can be seen lying on the ground. Very soon, the entire place begins to shake as a massive yokai known as Tengu slowly walks towards the main character while
carrying the legendary sword. The demon tells the boy to take the weapon, and Tadashi tries to draw out the blade, but the fierce power only frightens the main character as he's too afraid to use the sword. Their meeting is quickly interrupted while the entire place begins to vibrate once again, and a massive machine is able to break into the cave. The robot begins releasing numerous Kikais into the area, including Aji, who's here to defeat the Chosen One before he can interfere with her master's plan. The mechanical monsters try to fight against the people, but Tengu becomes enraged by the intrusion, causing him to swing at the enemies and blowing all the opponents away. However, Aji is able to survive the onslaught as she prepares to fight the giant demon all by herself. Tengu attacks the woman furiously and manages to throw her onto the ground, but Aji counters right away and slashes the opponent right across the face. The giant demon becomes infuriated by the attack and fails to notice the enemies behind him who manages to grab onto his back, which allows Aji to slash off the yokai's wings. The robot begins to fly into the air and dragging the demon towards the surface, while managing to capture one of their most powerful warriors. The demon cat sees this and rushes towards the legendary sword, trying to bring the weapon towards the main character, but is confronted by the enemies right away. Before the animal can be killed, Tadashi conjures up all his courage and charges towards the weapon, finally pulling out the sword and managing to save his friend. The weapon begins repelling all the attacks like it has a mind of its own, eventually striking the robot right in the chest and cutting the enemy into pieces. The sword prepares to fight against the other monsters, but the main character is frightened by the weapon's powers and throws it away in fear. This gives Aji the chance to break the sword in half and destroying the only hope that the boy has for defeating the enemies. The woman walks towards Tadashi to finish the kill, while the demon cat jumps in the way to save its friend, but is quickly thrown away by Aji and trapping it inside a microwave. Luckily, the boy is saved when Kato begins calling his minions to come back to his factory, as he's ready to commence the next phase of the plan. The robots all retreat onto the ceiling of the cave, causing the entire place to crumble as the main character tries to run away from the falling rocks. When the boy eventually wakes up, he finds himself inside a building where he sees numerous yokai around him and is shocked by how strange each one of the creatures look. A blue demon grabs onto the broken blade and examines the boy in frustration, but eventually comes up with the idea of fixing the sword. He tells everyone that there's only one blacksmith capable of fixing the weapon, and the demon suggests that they find the person right away. The yokai calls upon the magical mirror to reveal the location of this demon, but is shocked to find out that he has already been captured by the enemy alongside the demon cat. What's even worse, the people learn that they're turning yokai into monsters, and their leader is the fearsome Kato, who's created by the hatreds of mankind. The demons are frightened by this realization, and all the yokai begin to disband, as they want nothing to do with fighting such dangerous enemy. The red demon tries to convince his comrades to help, but fails to make the people stay, only managing to recruit a flying carpet and a demon who only knows how to wash beans. The team becomes hopeless as their people is unwilling to fight, but is surprised when Tadashi rises up in courage as he promises to rescue the demon cat and all the yokai. However, the red demon quickly senses that something is wrong as the giant factory monster begins moving from its location, revealing their final destination to be Tokyo. The massive creature rises into the clouds and launches straight towards the population center while causing tremendous damage on its way. The giant factory begins spitting out numerous robots onto the cities below, causing the Kikais to appear everywhere in human civilization as they completely destroy the civilians. The heroes have decided to head towards Tokyo as well, but quickly realizes that their method of transportation is way too slow, which will never allow them to catch the enemy. The girl gets a brilliant idea and decides to put all the people onto an airplane, but ends up regretting it immediately as they're all turned into popsicles. Meanwhile, in the city of Tokyo, the reporter is having dinner with his friend, but they're quickly interrupted by a massive earthquake. They look up into the sky and sees the giant monster flying across the air, while covering the entire area by using its massive body. The enormous entity eventually lands on top of a skyscraper as it begins devouring the entire building, and causing everything to fall down right on top of everyone. After the factory monster 
monster has landed, Kato begins absorbing all the human hatred into the creature which only empowers him even more. The massive entity releases tremendous amounts of pollution onto the streets and shutting down the entire city as a result. Surprisingly, the reporter was able to survive the falling buildings and struggles desperately to climb out from the area. At the same time, Achi is trying to make even more monsters for her army as she drags the blacksmith across the room. Luckily, the demon cat decides to interfere as it bites the woman on her fingers, allowing the demon to knock her away and giving them a chance to escape. However, a robot jumps in the way to stop the yokai, forcing the demon cat to launch towards the enemy as it uses the biological weapon against the monster. This gives the blacksmith a chance to run, but causes the demon cat to be captured by the enemy while Aji hits the animal continuously in frustration. She promises to severely punish the demon as she takes the yokai towards the factory's heart and drops the creature inside the flames. On the other side, the main character has arrived into Tokyo alongside his friends, but they're surprised to see that everything is covered in black smoke. They eventually make it towards the giant factory and sees that the blacksmith has managed to escape the building. They recruit the demon right away to fix the legendary sword, but when Tadashi inquires about the whereabouts of the demon cat, the yokai is too ashamed to tell the boy the truth. Very soon, they're able to fix the sword, and Tadashi puts on his new armor that makes him look like the first Hokage from Naruto. He grabs onto the legendary weapon and promises that he'll rescue all the yokai from their enemies. At the same time, the reporter manages to climb all the way towards the rooftop, and he's shocked to see Tadashi coming towards him while flying in the sky. The boy goes alongside all his friends and lands right onto the building, but is quickly knocked away by the enemy that sends him flying backwards. Very soon, numerous mechanical monsters appear in front of the main character to take his life, but the boy manages to fight back and destroys the enemies by using his sword. As the fight continues, Tadashi becomes more proficient at wielding his weapon and is able to cut through the enemies like they're made from cardboard. However, his friends in the air are quickly attacked by the flying monsters, causing them to fall down towards the ground. Luckily, Tadashi is able to fight off the enemies before the demons are killed, but the people are quickly surrounded by even more kikais that vastly outnumbers them. The main character refuses to give up so easily as he gets ready to fight, while the bean demon is only concerned about all the beans that he spilled. The team manages to climb onto higher grounds while trying to knock off the enemies, but the red demon quickly feels that something is coming this way. All the people watch in shock as they see a huge gathering of yokai moving towards them. It turns out that all the demons thought that there was a festival in the area and decided to come for the party, not realizing that it's actually a battle. The yokai quickly surrounds the entire area, eventually making it onto the rooftop and thinking that the fights are part of the show. The demons begin joining the battle as well, believing that it's part of the celebration and they're quickly able to overwhelm the mechanical monsters by their sheer numbers. This gives Tadashi the chance to make it inside the building, while the reporter is continuously hit by invisible forces that he cannot see, which are actually the demons fighting. Suddenly, a big fridge flies towards the man, revealing numerous spears inside the container, and the reporter begins drinking immediately to quench this madness. Surprisingly, he's able to start seeing the yokai fighting around the entire area, and begins celebrating the return of his long lost power. On the other side, Tadashi continues breaking through the barriers as he heads closer towards the factory's heart, but immediately runs into a massive kikai that stands in his way. The boy prepares to fight the enemy, and easily cuts off the opponent's arm as he knocks the giant monster away. However, Tadashi quickly notices the bandages on the creature's leg, which are the same ones that he gave to his demon cat, revealing that the monster is actually his friend. The kikai begins attacking once again, while the main character tries to tell it to stop, but it's very clear that words can no longer reach his friend anymore. The monster knocks the boy away using tremendous force, and begins turning the attention towards the demon girl as it tries to kill her as well. Tadashi has no choice but to charge towards the kikai and slashes the creature across the body, while the monster slowly collapses towards the ground. Tadashi slowly walks towards the wounded creature and apologizes for failing to save his friend, while his tears fall onto the yokai and turning it back to its true form.
arm. Luckily, the demon cat is still alive despite the wounds on his body, and the boy promises that he'll stop Kato in order to save all the innocent lives. Their conversation is quickly interrupted by Aji, who attacks the boy immediately, but the main character is able to counter right away. Tadashi screams in anger as he launches a massive energy ball towards the girl and knocking her backwards across the room. Before their fight can continue further, the entire facility begins to shake as the woman realizes that the final phase of Kato's plan is about to commence. She runs towards her master immediately, while Tadashi chases her alongside the river princess who's carrying the demon cat. Aji eventually makes it towards Kato as the main character arrives closely behind. The boy takes no hesitation before launching a powerful attack towards the enemy, but is shocked to see that the man is not damaged at all. Kato begins conjuring his energy and shoots a fireball that knocks the boy flying backwards. He tries to kill the princess as well by shooting a second attack, but is quickly blocked by the main character which knocks them both onto the ground. Surprisingly, the Bean Demon has made it towards the room as well, but Kato ignores the yokai, thinking that he's nothing more than a nuisance. He turns the attention towards the boy, who's able to get up once more, and he mocks the main character for being so weak. The man conjures up a final attack which knocks away the boy like a fly. The demon opens up the factory's heart and prepares to jump inside so that he can fuse together with all the hatred of mankind that he's gathered. Kato turns around and tells Aji to come along, as the girl runs towards her master but quickly stops right in front of him. It turns out that Kato has stabbed her right in the stomach, claiming that the woman's love for him will only hinder the entire process and she's no longer useful anymore. What they don't realize is that the reporter has made it inside the building as well, and the man finally sees the river princess who saved him a long time ago. The man screams in joy and rushes towards the princess like he was in Super Mario before jumping towards her like a real simp. The reporter lands on the wood board that the beam demon is sitting on and sending the yokai straight into the air while causing him to spill all his beans. Kato drops Aji towards the floor as the woman dies before she hits the ground, and the evil demon prepares to jump into the smelter to obtain his power. However, a single beam manages to make it into the machine, which Kato eventually sees as he falls towards the flames. The object completely alters the fusion process, which manages to neutralize all the kikais that are attacking the demons outside and causing them to fall into pieces. The yokai celebrate their victory by doing the waves as the entire factory begins to overheat, eventually causing a massive explosion that sends all the demons flying into the air. The yokai embrace this as they ride the waves like they're in the water park, and the main character is able to make it out as he rides onto the magical chilling. The morning eventually arrives onto the lands, and the boy wakes up in the middle of the streets alongside the reporter, while being happy to see that the world is finally at peace once again. Many years later, Tadashi is now a grown man, as he slowly loses the ability to see yokai, including the demon cat, who screams continuously towards the main character. However, the creature realizes that someone is approaching from behind, and is shocked to see that Kato has somehow survived, now possessed the beans as part of his pupil. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.